Hello, this is Georgina Rose, part-time esoteric content creator and part-time occultist. And welcome back to another YouTube video. You are currently watching the Dot Darling channel, a channel where we discuss magic, mysticism, religion, and everything in that sphere. Uh, and in this video, we're gonna be talking all about scrying. Scrying is one of those things in the occult that I think is pretty iconic. If you look even on the emojis on your iPhone, you're gonna see that there's a crystal ball emoji. As well, in countless pieces of media and film, you see people looking into a crystal ball for visions, for information. So if you've seen that, you know what scrying is. Scrying is essentially staring into a surface to get visions. No, it does not work like exactly how it does in the movies, right? Like you don't put the crystal ball up and stare at it and then like a whole film just starts playing in it. But it is a powerful form of divination and is used in a lot of ritualistic ways beyond just telling the future. Scrying is a really important skill and it's one that takes a little bit of time to develop. I find that it's a lot more difficult than other forms of divination such as tarot or runes because it is so much more internal and a lot more about your own interpretations. You can't really pick up a guidebook that explains to you what you see in scrying. Rather, it's a lot more what your mind tells you and your personal understanding of symbolism. So before you have any of these experiences, I would think about your own symbol set. Because when you see an image or you see a sort of motif in any sort of ritual, you're gonna have to interpret it through your lens. While it can be tempting to go Google like, what does X symbol mean? I find that that's not always the best way to interpret it. Think about what it means in your personal paradigms. Like, what does the symbol mean in the religion you grew up around, in the culture you grew up around, or in the practice that you follow? What does it mean to you? Because I find that that's a lot better of a way of interpreting things. In terms of symbol interpretation, I really recommend looking into Jung because he sort of paved the way for that and a lot of his ideas are really helpful. So why would you even scry? Now that we know that it's about looking at an object and seeing your personal symbol set and then interpreting it, why would you do it? Well, there's sort of two reasons. The first is obviously divination. If you don't know what divination means, it's basically where you do various tasks to see the future or get an insight on future events. Divination typically won't tell you exactly what will happen, but rather give you advice so that you can understand what's going on, conceptualize it, and make better choices. I find that I tend to go to divination whenever there's major life changes in my life so that I can get guidance and know what to do. In terms of what divination results tell you, my personal view on it is that it's what will happen if you don't change course. So let's say you scry on an event in your life and you see like imagery that makes you feel uncomfortable. Say you're smoke scrying and the smoke goes in a weird direction. I interpret that as an omen or something that you can look at to change courses ahead rather than a full damnation, which of course some people do take divination as, but I think it's more what will happen if you remain on your course rather than some sort of a destined path. It's, it's an insight. And so when you do divination for any sort of event, it allows you that warning so that you know if you're going in the right path or if your path is actually wrong for you so that you can, before things get bad, make the proper choice for your life. As well, scrying is used in spirit contact. This may sound a little strange since with spirit contact, we picture like a little voice in the back of our heads or the temperature of a room changing, like say your room gets really cold or feeling like, uh, just a different energetic shift. Like the room feels different, it's colder, that's kind of what we picture. But scrying is actually a really helpful way to do spirit contact. So if you've watched a TikTok, you're gonna see these little skits where um, a cultist will like act out their conversation with spirits. That's not really what happens in real life. It's a lot more subtle. Those skits are dramatic interpretations. So when people first get into spirit contact, like invocation and evocation, they tend to feel really disappointed, right? They're not getting that scene. They're not getting where they're sitting across a coffee table and talking to a deity. Rather, it's subtle symbols and just feels really different. Scrying is a way to get that effectively. You're never gonna have that perfect conversation, especially not if you're a new practitioner. Something like scrying can be extremely helpful. Um, in Enochian, which I have a whole video on Enochian, the way that John Dee would connect to the angels he was discovering was through a scryer. He would do the invocation and then he had the scryer who would do the scrying and then record everything they saw. A common thing in older rituals is that you have someone as a ritualist and the other person will be scrying. Um, in this, you see the use of like various um, things like in rituals like Goetia, which is where you do a demonic evocation, you see a lot of scrying. Uh, people make this little triangle. It's called the Triangle of Art. I'll pop one up there. Uh, where you write sort of God names around it, and then through a black mirror, you scry the spirits and you see what's happening. Because 
it's never really as obvious as you think. If you're gonna use uh, probably the two that I'm gonna come up with first when it comes to spirit contact is obviously a crystal um, or a black mirror, like a triangle of art style black mirror. Um, I find that you tend to not see like pictures, but rather like shapes or you'll start looking at something and it'll make sense in your head. Like it will shift and your brain will connect something. It'll make that connection that wasn't already there. And then through that, you'll be able to interpret it. You'll be able to just like, write it all down, vomit it into your book of shadows or your grimoire, and then with that, interpret it and make sense of the ritual in retrospect. So that you're taking in the information, then using it in a way that's actually effective for you. So I like to get the best sort of visuals by putting a candle on either side of these surfaces and then burning incense around it and paying attention to the smoke. There's a whole style of scrying that is just looking at candle flames and seeing what candle flames do. This is really common with certain meditation practices. They'll have you like put a candle out and you'll meditate while staring at the flame and sort of interpret it that way. Kabbalistically, a light of a flame connects the four worlds together and is a representation of divinity through that sort of metric, but staring at candle flames is a long history. Um, however, I, I caution people with it. I used to do a lot because it can actually damage your vision long-term, which is something you don't want to do. So what I'll do is I'll put the candles on either side and then see how that affects what I see in the scrying surface. Um, as well, incense smoke is a common scrying method. If you've ever done a spell or a ritual and you've seen the smoke do weird stuff, you can actually interpret that. Just like how you can interpret the wax of the inside of a seven day candle as a form of divination, the way that the candles light and the way that the smoke moves can completely be scried into. In a lot of cultures, you see people staring in and seeing the shapes that smoke tapes and then interpreting the shapes of that smoke and then using that in their ritual work. That is in essence scrying. Scrying exists in many forms. As well a common form, but I really only see this for divination because I don't really think it would work as well with spirit contact would be using a bowl. So what you use, you get a big glass black bowl or like a big crystal black bowl or just any black bowl is fine. And you'll put a bunch of water in it, fill it with water, and then I think it's best to drop a little bit of oil. You can make like full-on scrying oils that are just oils designed for scrying so you can see better. So you'll put them on their eyelids and just on their foreheads and annoy with it. But you can put some of that in the water and see how the oil sort of moves on the surface of the water and then interpret that. As well, you can sort of just see what happens at the bottom of the bowl. This only really works with black bowls. I mean, you can see it with other materials, but I find it's best with black. In general, a lot of scrying materials are black because of the way that black reflects things, think the black mirror, think the bowl. Um, however, you can scry into other um, materials. With crystal balls in particular, I think black is one of the better ones. Obviously in media, we're used to seeing the clear one, um, but I find clear is a little harder to scry into. As well, you can see all these like really fancy ones where they'll make it with um, like a mix of glass and crystal. Those tend to be a little more affordable because a pure crystal ball tends to be kind of expensive. You can also see it made with other crystals, so that's really up to you. If you're gonna use an alternative crystal besides clear or black, I would suggest doing one that has a divination correspondence so that that correspondence is there. Uh, as well, I personally, this is not a requirement, I like to separate the scrying materials I use for with spirits to get interpretations and with divination. So I will use my black mirror with spirit scrying and then my crystal ball with personal. There's no like, need to do that. There's no rule for that, but I find that it just keeps things a little more streamlined because I don't like mixing it. If you're going to change purposes, I would cleanse them between like, say you use your black mirror for goetic scrying. I would like smoke cleanse that between each time you do it just so it's a little cleansed and pure. Um, in general, scrying is kind of difficult and it takes time to understand and you should come in with realistic expectations. You should not come in expecting to see a film, but rather seeing symbolic messaging that makes sense in retrospect. In general, I've noticed with interpreting symbols through ritual is that in the moment, they don't always make sense. You'll get an image and it'll feel really weird for you. You'll be like, okay, but what does this mean? And then with time, when you look back on it and you gain more esoteric knowledge, it actually starts making sense to you. I find that we tend to experience ritual first through the lens of our subconscious. And then with time, our conscious begins to interpret that and make sense of it. And then we understand what it all means. I think there's no need to understand everything instantly. Um, and if you have a ritual where you scry some spirit you've evoked, you can pull things like tarot cards to make sense of it. You can do shadow work prompts on 
hmm, what does this symbol mean to me? What does that exactly mean to me? And then through that, help you interpret the mystical experience better. For me, I've had rituals and dreams that only make sense years later. Simply the first time you do it, just focus on the moment and focus on recording. Think of yourself like Edward Kelly, John Dee's scryer. Record it all and then afterwards, shift through it and make sense of it. What you want during the ritual you're actually doing is presence which is personally why I think a evoker and scryer team works best. Of course, there are different arguments for it, but I think if you have someone doing the, the spirit conjure and then someone writing, it allows the person doing the conjure to focus fully on the ritual because no ritual is gonna work well if you're distracted or if you're not giving it your all. So I think the scryer and the recorder is really helpful because they're able to just like jot it all down and then you can both sit down together and make sense of it. Um, I was reading a book about uh, Islamic magic and they had a ritual assistant for almost everything. Like they had this young ritual assistant who would help them out with things that they're not doing it on their own. Obviously I'm a solitary practitioner. I don't have the luxury of having like a ritual partner who's able to record everything for me all the time. But if you can find someone to work with, it can actually be really helpful. Group rituals don't need to be some big coven celebration. It can just be two people working together. I think the best dynamic of this is Kelly and Dee. So reading through their journals can give you a good um, reference point for what that can look like. In terms of my advice for scrying, try different methods. Different ones will work for you. For me, I really struggle with some methods, but I'm really natural with others. For me, the one that worked first for me was candle scrying. I found that that came the easiest to me and my brain connected it the quickest. I definitely felt a little worried about like vision reasons. I was kind of worried that it would strain my eyes, but it was absolutely the first thing I went to and the one that made the most sense to me quickly. And then with time, I got better at it. For personally, for me, scrying into a bowl is actually the hardest. I couldn't really get that many results with it until I used the oil, but I've talked to other occultists and different things have worked for them. There's no single way of scrying that is guaranteed to be the perfect method. Everyone has their own methods and with time and with you practicing more and more, those will make sense to you. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to find me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, uh, Telegram, and Patreon. If you join my Patreon, you get to support all these videos and keep them coming and you get an extra video every month ritual guides, the ability to ask me your questions and pry because I don't get to read every comment. I just get a lot of comments now, so I can't look through all of them. Uh, and as well, if you want to donate to me directly but not get a subscription, I have a Ko-Fi where you can uh, just donate once and get it done with. You don't get anything in return, but you get to just do it one time rather than that subscription format. Um, as well, uh, I host the podcast Magnolias and Magic, which is an esoteric commentary podcast where I give my thoughts on the state of the occult community, issues within the community, and related topics. That's on all major podcasting platforms and Patreon where you get extra episodes every every couple bit of time and extended shows and pre-shows. Um, also, also, I stream on Twitch twice a week. Uh, I post daily on TikTok. I post daily on Instagram. I'm all over. I do things like book reviews on Instagram and all sorts of things. I'm everywhere but Facebook. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a lovely evening and like, comment, subscribe and ring the bell and you will meet your holy guardian angel in 93 days.